Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are uh, getting back out to the wood pile to get some more wood cut up and split and uh, stacked up in the garage. But uh, before I do that, uh, many times throughout the year, uh, we have to do some kind of maintenance to these chainsaws. Uh, sharpening the chains is something that we obviously have to do all the time uh, when we're out cutting. And I've got lots of different methods that I've used over the years to do that. So I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about that and we're gonna try a new sharpener today that uh, I think is gonna work out pretty good. So we'll have to see how that goes. So let's first start with uh, the, the chain maintenance and sharpening the chains up. This is the most common struggle I think with, with, uh, with chainsaw owners is keeping a sharp chain. It's probably one of the, the most important things that you can do with your tool <laughs> is keep that chain sharp and know how to sharpen it yourself. And so I'll show you what I've used over the years, uh, pros and cons of, of all those things, and then we'll, we'll get to uh, one of these chains sharpened up with the new sharpener, and we'll see how well it works. So I have used a ton of different uh, things over the years to try to keep chains sharp. It's, been, it's always been my biggest struggle. I, I originally went out uh, and bought this little kit. It has a, a gauges in it that you mount on the bar and, and, and line it up just right, and then you have these, uh, this, this handle that came with it. You select the right file and then you'd, you'd stick it in here and you'd use this to, to file your, your teeth out in the gully. And then you switch this to your flat file and you take your flat file in there and you, you clear off your, your depth gauges or your rakers uh, with this as well. So this, this did everything and this worked pretty good. This got me going and it helped me to sharpen the teeth and, and keep, things, keep things working pretty well. So I also tried this as a Husqvarna, I think, tool. This is another kind of guide that you uh, put on here. I remember how these things work. And you do the same kind of thing. You know, you get this lined up just right with your teeth and then you run your, your, uh, your files through there, your, your uh, uh, raker or depth gauge file, and then your, your tooth file. And that would uh, sharpen that. So that was great. And all those things worked pretty good, but I thought there must be an easier way for me to do this. I usually rotated through several different chains and so I, I bought this Buffalo uh, grinder uh, that mounts to a, the, the edge of a desk. The disadvantage of this one, obviously, is you have to take your chains out and you, you put them in here. This mounts like this, put your chain in there, and then you grind uh, each of your teeth. Uh, this does not handle the depth gauges or the rakers. It does not sh uh, shave those down, but it did a decent job of sharpening the teeth. Uh, but I did have issues with it not being quite the same uh, between you know the, your left hand teeth and your right hand teeth, and that ended up getting uh, cuts that would, that would curve. My my chain would curve in, in the logs, and, that, and that's a result of sharpening one one tooth, one direction of your tooth, uh, differently than the other direction over time. So that was an issue that I ended up having with this, and and with this as well, because you when you're doing it by hand, you tend to if you're right-handed, you tend to sharpen one tooth you know differently than you sharpen it at the different angle. And so you, over time, you know, you end up, your teeth get off. So even with the gauges and guides and all those things, uh, this, this wasn't great. And, uh, and this ended up not being great. All these solutions will definitely work, but over time I did have various issues with all of them. This was pretty cheap. I put links in the description to all this stuff. If you're interested in trying any of it yourself, it's all here. The best tool that I have found so far is this. This is not a cheap sharpener, but it is a, excellent sharpener. <laughs> this does everything. It has your, your fi a flat file in here. It has your round files in here. Um, it has two round files in here, one for uh, uh, each side of the tooth, and I'll show you how this works. Uh, it has the instructions kind of printed right on it so you know what you're doing. This gives you a perfect, well, I don't want to say perfect, a darn near perfect sharpen every single time. This is great for field sharpening. Obviously, you can replace your files fairly easily. You just pop this out. You can you know, pull your files out, your round files out, whatever. You can replace those um, with, with newer ones as they wear out. But this tool is was, I think when I bought it, it was about 40 bucks. They make all kinds of different sizes, and you put all different kinds of size files in here. This thing just works great for field sharpening. It's all in one. I don't have to carry around a bunch of crap like this. You know, I don't have to have all that stuff. I just take this. I can throw it in my in a pocket. I can throw it in my my little bin that I carry around here. How this works is you, uh, I usually just take a, a carry marker around, I mark my first tooth. And then you just take this and you rest it in here. It'll tell you, so this is 
the direction you want to go this way and the tooth should be on this side so this is actually the wrong way so we flip it around flip it around and this is the way we would sharpen this tooth the flat file rests right on top of the raker the round file rests right in the gully of the tooth and as you pass through here you actually sharpen both at the same time you keep this bar right here lined up with the, the laser etched line on your, your tooth. It tells you the angle to keep it at. And you just run it. And you just run this through here a few times on each tooth. Go down the line and you keep doing that. And then obviously flip it around and then do your other uh, side as well, all the way through. And this thing gives you an excellent uh, sharpen every time. So this is a great tool. But again, uh, over time, sharpening the, that way by hand, I, again, I still, if I'm right hand, I'm right handed, so I end up uh, sharpening one side of my teeth a little differently than the other, and I can get off, you know, after five, six, seven times of sharpening the, the, uh, the chain, they can get a little bit off. I've noticed I'll, I'll still get a little bit of a curve. Not as bad as the other ones I've used, but you're still sharpening by hand and it's not perfect. So, I'm going to try this out. This is an elect electric uh, sharpener. It has a guide. It's not as cumbersome as this, and I don't have to take my chain off. Uh, it looks like I can sharpen this right on the bar. And so we're going to get this out and get it set up. I've never used this before, so we're going to be learning together here. And we'll, uh, we'll give this a shot and see how well this works. All right, so basically what this is, is a, it's a Dremel tool with a guide, uh, essentially. So it comes with a few different size bits and a little, little gauge that you can use to make sure that you match up the, the right size uh, grinding uh, stone there with, with your, your chain tooth. So we're at 730 seconds with ours, and uh, so I measured that up and I've got that installed here. Um, the guide here just gives you some angle uh, help as you put this in the, uh, in the teeth. It lines up with the, uh, the side of the tooth. So right here is about a 30 degree angle. Uh, this would be a 25, and then this would be a pretty harsh uh, 35. So we'll see how well this works. This obviously does not handle the depth gauges or the rakers. It doesn't file those down, so we'll still have to do those by uh, by hand, so there's a, a separate step there, but hopefully getting the, the teeth fixed, this will help uh, help with that. The other thing that this helps with that uh, your field sharpening doesn't do, and I don't know if I have an example on this chain, but if you hit a rock, if you hit a, a barbed wire fence, if you run into something you know <laughs> that you shouldn't be cutting through, you can, uh, this, this tooth here is, is pretty bad, but you can actually you know gouge your teeth out or cause other issues, a grinder, can help to, to kind of correct that. You can get the tooth back a little bit further and correct some of those chips in your teeth. I also would like to say that these chains do not last forever. They do wear out. Uh, most of the time, I end up having issues with my chains uh, stretching out before I can actually you know sharpen it all the way down to the to the, the line there. But uh, this, this actually has a master link in it, this chain, so I know where I started, but I'm also gonna uh, just mark this with a marker just so I know where I started. So we're gonna do all the, uh, this, I guess the right hand teeth first and then we'll, we'll flip it around and do the left hand teeth. It does have a couple different speeds on it too, so we'll see how it works. Well, it definitely seems to to do the job. All right, let's get the opposite way done. It's pretty easy. The guide is uh, the guide's okay. Um, I think it helps to, to kind of keep you in line, but I'm just following the, the angle that the teeth are already at anyway and the, the uh, laser etch that's on there. So I don't know if the guide is necessary or not, but it does help you kind of rest it on the tooth as you as you go through. So now I'll just take a, a flat file and I'll just go knock, knock the top off of these. So one of the other things that I always talk about with maintaining these bars, um, depending on the bar you have, a lot of the bars are sealed, but many of them actually do have a, an oil port on them. So this uh, Husqvarna came with a uh, a bar that needs to be oiled. So there's a sprocket in here that, that uh, you know, 
holds the teeth as they go around the, the angle here, the curve at the end of the bar. And so this actually needs to be greased in this particular bar. So they make these little little grease guns. I think this is an organ. Uh, yep. And again, I'll, I'll link to this. Uh, a lot of a lot of people I know don't uh, don't know about this step. So, but this just uh, forces grease in, kind of reloads on its own, and you just force the the grease into the end there. And a lot of times you can see it start to squirt out of the sprocket once it's once it's full. And so there's some popped out right there, and I can see some at the top. All right, this chain is really erect. So this will be a, a challenge for the the new chainsaw sharpener. So it does have different speeds on it. Let's turn it up a little bit. See if that makes a difference. So let me just show you what's happened with these teeth. See how the gullies are all wrecked there? That has got these two divots on in that gully. That's supposed to be round, you know, just like this this uh, file. And this was actually from using that buffalo sharpener. You can see how it's how it's fixing that uh, that gully and rounding it back out again. So. All right, we got both saws ready to roll. Uh, the steel, I have a feeling, is not going to cut that great just because that chain is pretty trashed. But we'll see if we were able to correct it with the new sharpener. And uh, we'll try out the Husqvarna today as well. So I'm just going to grab a few various sized uh, branches or something out of here. And, and we'll just cut through a few. And we'll take a look at the chips to help us to determine how well they're cutting. So one of the kind of easy ways you can tell uh, how sharp your, your chain is, is uh, obviously by how well it cuts. And that, that cut pretty well. It, it sunk right through that, uh, that log without an issue. And the chips themselves, that's a pretty decent, decent size uh, little shreds of, of wood. So I've seen, I've seen it be better. A brand new chain will, will get a little longer uh, chips out of it. But this is good if if you're if you're uh, you're cutting and you're you're uh, ending up with sawdust at the end, then you'll you'll uh, <laughs> your chain's not sharp, and that's what happens once it gets dull. Is it it stops taking out these nice long long pieces like that, and it'll start just barely shaving. You know, every time that chain comes through here, it's just taking off a tiny 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 little bit of wood, and that's why it takes so long to cut through with a dull chain. Uh, it didn't hang up at all, and it didn't take a lot of power from the saw, even even though it was cold, so it's still kind of low power. Um, it, it shaved through here uh, pretty easily. So, so I would say that's definitely a win for the uh, the new sharpener. The teeth, I like how it how it really really gets that that gully in there real nice. You can see it on all those teeth. It really really does good to to kind of reset these. Now let's try the steel. Uh, I haven't used this saw in a while, actually. You can see the gullies on here are uh, not 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 great looking, but that that uh, that new sharpener cleaned them up a little bit, made them look a little better. So let's see if this thing will cut. All right, so we cut uh, a new, same log in a different, different spot here. So we've got a different uh, area of wood chips or shavings from the saw. And you can see it definitely is uh, not cutting too bad. It didn't go through there through bad at all. Uh, some of these are uh, a pretty decent 
decent size. We got some pretty good curls there. Obviously different woods. Uh, this isn't uh, super hardwood here. This is not oak or maple or anything like that. I think this may even be a cottonwood or an elm, but still demonstrates uh, that the chain is sharp. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's all we're looking for here. Uh, definitely think that I could tweak uh, the angle that I was using that grinder and maybe tidy this up a little bit, the sharpening process, but I really do like that, uh, the new sharpener. So uh, if you're out there and you're just, you know, starting to, to cut wood or, or getting into chainsaws, sharpening your chain is gonna be your biggest struggle over the over the years and, and using that saw with a dull chain is miserable it's just it's a, it's miserable to get out there with a with a dull dull chain so man fresh chain I, I love the first moments you get that brand new chain on there uh from your old one it's just such a great experience getting through and cutting through that wood and the and the idea the goal is to keep your chain that sharp just like new and this is pretty close i think this is this is pretty close so hopefully this uh, this helped you kind of get a few tips and tricks anyway watching what I do. I'm not a, a, a lumberjack. I don't work out in the woods professionally, but I cut a heck of a lot of wood every year. And I've been running these chainsaws for a decent amount of years now where I've learned a few things. And so hopefully I'll be able to share a couple of those things with you. And for the rest of the video, I'm just going to be processing some wood. So if you'd like to sit back and relax and just uh, enjoy uh, me outside working hard and maybe you sitting inside somewhere warm, uh, that would be great stick around uh, we're going to dig through this pile we're going to cut a bunch of these uh, branches out for uh, uh, into logs decent size 18 inch 18 inch or less and we'll throw them over to the splitter we'll run through the splitter and the goal is to get that trailer filled to the top and we'll take that up and be ready to burn